Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. We're going to get started on wiring up Acorn. We're going to do everything on the dry erase board first, and then we'll go out to the bench, and then we'll wire up the test rig that I have. Um, I'm going to erase this CNC PC from the board. I mean, it's obvious you've got to have a CNC PC hooked up to Acorn to make it work. That'll give us a little bit more room to work on the board. Okay, what you want to do before you get started, you want to make sure you have your schematic that closely matches what you're working with. There's, as I previously mentioned, there's so many stepper drives out there, motor drives out there, that it's impossible to cover them all. We're going to go over the one that I'm using. It's a microkinetic stepper driver and how it gets wired up. So, um, again, Make sure you download the schematics package from the Centroid Acorn resource page so you have something to go with. The power supply that comes with Acorn is a 24 volt, about a 1.1 amp output power supply. Because my stepper driver requires 5 volts input, I'm using a power supply with two outputs. One 5 volt output and one 24 volt output. Now, you can use a dropping resistor to drop 24 volts down, but I tell you, I don't think it's worth the effort. If you go to jameco.com, J-A-M-E-C-O.com, they have Meanwell power supplies. They're very inexpensive. They're under 20 bucks. For instance, uh, a dual output is the Meanwell RD35B. It's only $11.95. It puts out up to 4 amps at 5 volts and up to 1.3 amps at 24 volts DC. That's perfect. That's exactly what I need in this case. And many of you, if you have stepper drivers that require a positive 5 volt DC input, I suggest you buy that. The next one up from that is the RD50B. It's only $14.49. It puts out up to 6 amps at 5 volts and up to 2 amps at 24 volts. It's more than you need for uh, control voltages. So here you'll see my power supply. It shows 24 volts and 5 volts. Okay. The other thing that you may find is there's not enough common terminals on the Acorn. So what I suggest, and the other reason why I went ahead and erased the CNC PC, is that we have a, a terminal block for common. an auxiliary or an extra terminal block if you will. However many positions that you need. And on this side I'm just going to jumper them together. And most terminal blocks, the terminals, the pairs are, are they're tied together. And so the other thing we want to do is we want to tie our commons from our power supplies together. So here's the, the VDC from our control power supply. And here's the VDC from our stepper power supply. And then I'm going to take a wire over to our common bus. Okay. Now, we've also got to get power up to Acorn, so we can use this common bus now. Get it up to Acorn. And then I don't have a yellow marker. I'm going to go ahead and use a red dry erase marker and we're going to get 24 volts up to Acorn. So you see now we have 24 volts from our control power supply up to Acorn and we have common. The two power supplies are tied together and that's up to Acorn so now Acorn is powered up. Now as far as line goes um, it's recommended that you put a fuse in the circuit from your, your household outlet. We'll just show that this way. 
here's your plug then here's a fuse and then we're going to go up to this line of the stepper power supply and we're going to go up now when I make that loop that means I'm crossing over a line if I put a dot then we're tying to the line so we've got line through a fuse to the stepper power supply and to the control power supply I'll go ahead and use blue for neutral because obviously you can't see white so then we got our or neutral then our neutral to the stepper power supply there so now we've got our completed circuit and besides the fuse you may want to put a switch in there as well so you know, if you want to put a switch, you put a single pole, single throw switch in here. We'll draw that in really quick. Kind of an on off switch. Hopefully you can see that. Then you can put the switch ahead of the fuse or after the fuse. If it's after the fuse, I think it's protected a little bit more, but I think you get the point. So we got power, and then of course we got chassis ground here. Let's go ahead and draw that in as well, just so we get it all, all done. Actually, I'm gonna, gonna cheat a little bit and kind of save some room. this is going to get really busy go ahead and put our dots in for our tie points just a way of showing you that these wires are connected all right so we got ground going up going over to chassis ground up chassis ground and then we've got our AC going through a fuse going through a switch up to our stepper power supply and going up into our control power supply and then we got neutral depicted in blue here going over to our neutral of the stepper going up and to our neutral to control power supply. So we have power here. And then as soon as we flip the switch, we've got, we've turned on both power supplies and we've got power up to Acorn at that point. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and take care in this segment, we're gonna take care of e-stop and our home limit switch. All right, if you look at ACORN, it has input one, two, three, four, and then it says 24 volts, input five, six, seven, eight, input 24 volts. That means we have to run a 24 volt signal up to this, either one of these terminals. These terminals are tied together, they're not separated. So, let's go ahead, since uh, we're using red for 24 volts, see how long my marker holds out. We'll run a line from here. To there. And that's exactly the way the ACORN schematic shows it. 24 volts coming up and into the input. Let's do the e-stop circuit first. The e-stop has been designated as input eight on ACORN. We have a normally closed contact here. This is the e-stop button right here, which you, you hit, and these are its terminals. It's in its normally closed state. It's in its normal state. So from this terminal, we're gonna go up. 
we're going to go over and we're going to go down to input 8. Now we need a return path. So we have 24 volts feeding the inputs. Now 24 volts is coming out of that input and it's on one side and we've got to get the other side to common. That is a normally closed circuit. From the main screen, you can get to a diagnostics page. To do that, you press Alt-I on the keyboard and you'll get this screen with LEDs and we'll show that on the bench. And we'll set this up. In the wizard, E-stop is normally closed. So Acorn, in its ready state, is going to be expecting to see a normally closed contact here and the LED will be green on input 8. So there we've We've just completed our e-stop circuit. Now let's do our limit switch circuit. If we look on the drawing, they've designated input one as our first home limit switch, being the first axis. So this could be axis X, axis Y for two, axis Z for three, and if you need another one, you can use input 4 for another axis. So you have a rotary axis and you need to home it. So we're going to use input 1 at this point. Same thing. Here is our normally closed. And I mentioned previously, you want to use normally closed home limit switches, normally closed e-stop switches. So let's get this one wired up. We're going to come off this side. We're going to go over. We're going to go up. And we're going to go to input number one. And we have to do the same thing. We need to get this to, to the common bus. So from here we go over, up, and to the common bus. And that's it. Now, if you have three axes, X, Y, and Z, you'll have two more switches, and you'll do the same thing. You'll come off the common, and most likely you'll have a pair of wires. I suggest running 20 gauge to your switches. Make them shielded. Uh, I use a very small cable, so run a pair of wires from, from your control cabinet from common to input one. And let's just go ahead and call this X, X axis for now. X axis. I'm going to move this down. Well, I made a mess of that. So this is our x-axis home and limit switch. All right, so we're going to be working when we hook this, this uh, test rig up. This is going to be in our, our x-axis, our x-axis stepper driver. Okay, so you can, you can follow along here. AC through our fuse, through a switch, turns on both power supplies. When those two power supplies are on, We'll get power up to Acorn through its 24 volts. The two power supply commons are tied together and then they feed this little common bus. Let's call it a bus. It's just a terminal block. It's a place to land extra common wires because you're not going to have enough on Acorn to do it. So just put a block in there for that. So now we've got Acorn powered up. This is H4 and H1. Again, these are tied together internally so you can put it here or here. Drawing shows putting it there. Does it matter? So now, e-stop circuit is input eight. Well, it's assigned in, in the wizard that way now. So 24 volts comes up into the inputs. Then it comes out of input eight, goes through the e-stop, and to the common bus. Circuit's complete. Limit switch, same thing. 24 volts comes out comes over to the normally closed contact to the common bus. Again, when we do the 
diagnostics, Alt-I, we'll see a green light on this x-axis limit switch if we wired things correctly. Let's go ahead and wire up the stepper motor. This is the microkinetic stepper driver that I'm using. That's what I have to, to do the demo with. Again, yours might be a little bit different. Mine requires a 5 volt DC input. So let's get that wired up. So we're going to come out of the control power supply. 5 volts. Five volts in. Now we've got to complete that circuit. It's asking for ground. So we're going to come off this ground side. and down. So now we have 5 volts. Remember we've got our commons to this bus and we have 5 volts going up to the stepper driver. Again I'm using a, a, a pair of cable. It's just two wires in the cable to hook up my stepper driver. So now I have voltage to my stepper driver. Alright, now we need to get a wire from the correct axis output of ACORN this is the step and direction signals, H2 and H3. We're going to use H2, step ST1, DR1. Okay? Uh, I'm going to use blue for step. So on ST1, we're going to come up. and drop to step. Okay? DR1, which is direction, same thing. There. Okay? Now we've got to get stepper the stepper power supply. So we have get it get this is on the bench I'm using a 24 volt high current output power supply because that's what I have available. But now we've got to get our stepper voltage out of the power supply up to the stepper driver. I'm going to go ahead and kind of come down to try and keep things clear as best as I can. Okay, so here's our 24 volts up to our stepper power supply. Same thing, we need a common. We'll just grab it from here. There. So now we got our 24 volts for the stepper motor power supply. Now we have left is our stepper motor. So you have a coil. This is the A coil, this is the B coil. This is, according to the drawing, this is A plus, this is B plus, A minus, B minus. So let's wire those up. We have A plus, gonna go to A plus here. What other color can I use? Uh, I'll use blue and green. Okay, and then 
B plus. And B minus. That's it. It's wired. I mean, we have everything wired up here to basically drive a single axis. And if you have two more axes, you're going to repeat the limit switch. You're going to use, let's say you have a standard mill, X, Y, Z. You'll use input 1X, input 2Y, input 3Z. You'll need two more stepper drivers, two more stepper motors. For your stepper driver power supply, you'll come off of the positive side of your stepper power supply three times. One for X, one for Y, one for Z. That means you may need a terminal block to come off your your stepper power supply if your screw can't take three lugs and one for each stepper driver. In just a few minutes we've drawn out on the board what it's going to take to basically wire up Acorn. So let's go out to the bench and uh, let's get it wired up.